Hello, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center here to give you a first look again at the Wi-Fi Ranger Sky Pro LTE. And when I say again, this is because this is the second time we've taken a first look at a Sky Pro. Back last year in April 2017, Wi-Fi Ranger sent out to their beta testers the first iteration of the Wi-Fi Ranger Sky Pro LTE, which combines their existing Sky Pro, which like this, their long range uh, roof mounted basic little box with an internal LTE modem so that you can combine both LTE access, cellular access, and long range Wi Fi in one small roof mounted box. But, well, based on some feedback from beta testers, us included, they decided to postpone that product until they can get a slightly better LTE modem to include. And now here we are, early 2018, they are about to bring out the new Sky Pro LTE. Um, the change being, well, the old one had a, a LTE modem that was limited to just basically T-Mobile and AT&T. So, oh, and the so the new Sky Pro LTE will have a cellular modem that will support Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile. So it is a, a step up for flexibility and will let you put in your own um, SIM cards. Now, changing SIM cards does require a fairly complicated process. You've got to go up onto your roof and uh, uh, disassemble the, the, the case of the Sky Pro, very delicately remove the old SIM, put in the new one, but you do have that flexibility to change carriers if you want to. Um, unfortunately, for a lot of mobile users, you want to be able to change carriers um, easily, and this will be kind of a challenge if you're trying to uh, deal with a, a weak Verizon area, changing to AT&T might not be nearly as convenient as you'd like. Now, some of the interesting traits of the Sky Pro LTE as it's got this is these are actually not the cellular antennas these are the Wi-Fi antennas from the existing Sky Pro they are spring mounted so they should be able to handle a tree branch um, and this will give you uh, should perform fairly well for long range Wi-Fi we've had really good experience with the um, the Wi-Fi Sky Pro version and then the cellular antennas are actually kind of inside on either side of this so it is still a MIMO cellular antenna 2x MIMO and then the LTE bands supported are LTE bands 2, 4, 5, 13, and 17. What's missing there, no band 12, which is very, very important for T-Mobile customers. That's T-Mobile's long range band. No band 66, which is increasingly important for Verizon. And uh, um, no bands um, 29 or 30 or 12, which matter for AT&T. So this is not as big of a jump as we would have liked having seen um, Wi-Fi Ranger go back to the drawing board for uh, nearly a full year, but it is still a pretty flexible device. Now, one you have coming out of the Sky Pro LTE is an Ethernet cable, and this goes indoors and goes to um, well, the Sky Pro LTE pick comes with a Wi-Fi Ranger core, or this could also plug into a Wi-Fi Ranger Go AC, and that creates your indoor network and powers your rooftop unit. So you've got a dedicated indoor Wi-Fi network, you've got a dedicated long-range uh, Wi-Fi radio on the roof, and then you've got cellular that you could tap into. Or if you happen to have a more traditional um, cellular hotspot, the Wi-Fi Ranger core or Go AC inside can USB tether to those hotspots. So it gives you a lot of connections that you can easily flip between and try out. Now, um, interesting competition in this space on your roof is the um, WineGuard Connect T 2.0, which is also brand new to the market. WineGuard Connect T 2.0, as you see, is a, a much physically, physically lar much larger box. Um, has the three Wi-Fi antennas inside and two cellular antennas very similar cellular capabilities can also be switched between the same three carriers Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile. Um, the WineGuard's one super significant difference is instead of having Ethernet going inside and an indoor dedicated indoor wired and wireless network it just has raw 12 volt power so everything the WineGuard is doing creating a local Wi-Fi network is happening down from the roof whereas this has got an inside dedicated private network to you that should potentially have much better local networking performance. Now, we're going to be comparing these two very similar devices and um, um, sharing our first-hand impressions and everything with the members of our mobile internet aficionados uh, at the Mobile Internet Resource Center. And so stay tuned to see what we think of these two interesting new devices. <laughs> very long screws.
kit. That's the SIM card. Right there. You need to use a little sticker to get it in and out. Not easy. Especially when you're trying to balance on a roof. Yes. Let's see if I can even get it back in. It's definitely hard to film and keep it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's one of the more challenging SIM cards I've dealt with. There you go. That's the internals.